We all have our wilderness. We think our temptation is too much to handle. We give in to sin and feel alone. Jesus knows our weakness. He stood face to face with Satan and through the struggle he stood up and said, no. Barry, in this episode, we're wanting to talk about Jesus and his baptism and his temptation in the wilderness. Now, we have both of those events recorded for us in Matthew. Matthew chapter 3, we have the baptism by John down by the Jordan. And then in chapter 4, Jesus is led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. What we want to do is we want to go to places that would be close to where Jesus was baptized and where Jesus would have gone into the wilderness to be tempted for those 40 days. What are our options to be able to see that? Well, with regards to the baptism, there's actually a couple places where we're gonna go. Okay. I wanna first take you to Yardanit, which is a site just south of the Sea of Galilee. We wanna go here because the Jordan River is much more attractive there. It looks much more like what it would have looked like down here at the traditional baptismal site. The second location we will also visit, and this is the more traditional location. We hear about uh, John the Baptist baptizing at Bethany beyond the Jordan, and it would have been in this area. So this is the better place for where Jesus would have been baptized. In Matthew chapter 4, when Matthew records for us that after the baptism, the Spirit led him into the wilderness, what wilderness are we able to go see? Well, we're going to be looking at the wilderness of Judea, and this was most likely the location where he was during this time. When I picture wilderness, I picture something barren, desolate, large sand dunes, people aren't around for miles. I mean, is that what we're going to go look at? Well, you're partially correct. It is very dry, it is very barren, but it has mountains and valleys. It's actually, in my opinion, one of the prettiest places in the entire land. I just, I have a hard time visualizing that, and what you're describing is beautiful. I can't wait to go and see that for myself. We're standing on the Jordan River. Where exactly are we? We're at a site called Yardanit. It's just south of the Sea of Galilee. A number of people use this where they come and be baptized. Why are we coming to this spot on the Jordan River as opposed to closer to the Judean wilderness? And where the traditional baptismal site is. Well, that's because the Jordan River, for the most part, is a boundary between two countries. It's between the countries of Israel, the West Bank, and Jordan. And so that area is, is politically and militarily sensitive. And in comparing the two places, you've explained that the water level here is higher, the river is a little bit wider, but when you get further south, it's lower, it's narrower than even it was during Jesus' time. Why is that? Mostly it's just because of population growth. In Israel and the West Bank and in Jordan, the mm -hmm. population has grown significantly over the last 100 years, and they need that water. They need it for agriculture, they need it to water their cattle, they need it for consumption. Because of that, water is not making it into the tributaries which lead to the Jordan River. So by the time the Jordan River flows all the way from here to the Dead Sea, it's just much lower and the flow is much slower. When we get down there, you'll notice that it's probably 12 or 15 feet wide at the widest. During Jesus' time, it was at least this wide, if not maybe a little bit wider. So where in the New Testament do we read about Jesus being at the Jordan River? Well, it's referred to a number of times. In Matthew, of course, he tells us that Jesus left Galilee and went down to the south to Jordan to be baptized. But in Luke 3, we read, now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and praying, the heavens were opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove and a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. So what Luke records for us is Jesus traveling from up here in the Galilee region mm -hmm. down to his cousin, John the Baptist. He's preparing the way for the kingdom of God and Jesus comes to him to be baptized. Now there are several things that John says as he interacts with Jesus at that point. And one of them is, I need to be baptized by you. What are you doing coming to me? Right. And Jesus explains that he needs to fulfill all righteousness. And John consents and baptizes him. 
And both in Matthew's account and here in Luke, we have this spirit descending on him like a dove, verifying something for John. I mean, he was looking for that event to, to confirm something about the identity That's of right. Jesus. That's this right. wasn't just his cousin. This was someone special. At one point, John looks at him and says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's right. That baptism marked a pivotal moment, which is just amazing to visualize. There would have been crowds of people all the way around as people were trying to get to John, as he's speaking to them, as he's baptizing them. So all these people would have watched this event unfold as he baptized Jesus from Nazareth. Now we're gonna go further south, closer to the traditional site where he would have been baptized by John. That's right, that site is about 60 miles south of here, just north of the Dead Sea. With talking to some of our sources, they encouraged us to go in with a smaller footprint. That's right, that location is on a boundary and it's also in a militarily controlled zone. So we're still allowed to go. Sure. Uh, it's just, it's gonna be different than what we've been doing so far. Yeah. Now it should pick you both up. Okay. Mic. What's on? So I just, this front button is the power button, but it's on right now. It's got a full battery, okay. and it's uh, we're gonna. It's on time lapse. Yeah, we're gonna change recording, but all you have to do is push that top button. It'll start recording. It'll start. Okay. The whole drive down, they've been talking about the complicated nature, the political situation, the religious situation, and all of that. It's sensitive and it's delicate, and you need to be respectful. Let's see. We are. So we're recording. Yep. Um, the guys just gave me a brief tutorial on using the Happy GoPro. Yep. We're at the Southern Baptismal site. We are. And we're holding a GoPro, which we have not done at all during any of these episodes. So no. why are we doing this? Well, we're doing this because this is a military uh, location. And so we want to be respectful of that. And yep. So we've left a number of our uh, bigger cameras in the bus. Basically look like tourists, so I can do that. <laughs> It's very hot down here. We're down in the bottom of the Jordan Rift Valley. Yeah. And uh, it's probably uh, close to 100 degrees today. It's, it's very warm. It's warm. Here. I mean, we've got this fence behind us. We've got this um, danger mine sign on the fence behind us. Obviously, they haven't totally cleared that area, and we're at a tourist stop. We are. So we've seen this a couple different times. Yeah. Let's head on down to the water. Okay. Let's okay. Go. So we're going to step down several steps to get close to the railing. So we're coming up on the, the Jordan River, which we set up north, looks different than what we saw. Tell us what we're seeing. All right, what we've got here is the Jordan River behind us. And as we've mentioned, the Jordan River is much smaller here. Very stagnant. Very stagnant, barely flowing at all. They will have, at the end of the rainy seasons, they'll have water come through here. Yeah. Uh, but most of the year, it looks just like this. Not near as wide mm -mm, as no. we would imagine no. it to be. It's probably only 15 feet wide right through here. Okay. Uh, we are about two miles north of the northern end of the Dead Sea. Okay, now what's on the other side of the river here? Well, you can see a number of churches and everything. The, on the other side is the country of Jordan. We read in the scriptures that John was baptizing at Bethany beyond the Jordan. Right. And so what we're doing is visiting the baptismal site from the Israeli side. Yeah. But in reality, Jesus was probably baptized a few hundred yards on the other side over here. The scripture tells that John was baptizing at Bethany beyond the Jordan, which is a location just probably a quarter mile or so to the east of the Jordan River at this spot. But we can't go beyond the Jordan. We're on the Israeli side That's of the right. Jordan. Jordan is to our east. About halfway across the river, right behind us, you can see that golden dome. That golden dome is in Jordan. We're standing on the border of Israel and Jordan. That's why this is a military zone. Right. And you've got Jordanian soldiers kind of guarding their side on mm -hmm. over there. You've got Israeli soldiers kind of guarding this side over here, which is the reason we're seeing these uh, barbed wire fences, occasionally a soldier. So we're just trying to be respectful of all of that. That's, that's why this is a little bit different. That's right. Even though it's not exactly where Jesus was baptized, it's the traditional baptismal it's, site right. that people visit. It's the traditional site, and I believe this is a fairly close location. Okay. I mean, it, it was probably just within a half mile or so of here, over there on the other side yeah. of the river. Let's just take another second to walk around and, and see what we can see. Maybe we can walk down to the water. That'd be great. Okay. 
I mean, just look at how murky that water is. Yeah. The water doesn't move very much through here. You've barely got a ripple in the water. It's a lot different when uh, you visualize this and then compare that to singing on Jordan's stormy banks I stand. Yeah, this is much different than uh, where we were at Yard and Eat. Yeah. Yard and Eat was a much, much cleaner place, much more representative of what it looked like during the time of Jesus. Yeah. From a biblical point of view, Jesus comes to be baptized by John the Baptist in Bethany beyond the Jordan. Right. He comes up out of the water. The Holy Spirit descends in the form of a dove. John hears a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And then from that point, Satan leads him into the wilderness, the Judean wilderness to right. be tempted. And right. he's, he's tempted for 40 days. Right. So I think from here, we're gonna wrap up and the plan is for you to take us to some wilderness to, to get a sense of what that would have looked like and what that would have felt like. The Judean wilderness literally starts just five or six miles to our west. All right. The baptismal site of Jesus is right next to the Judean wilderness. Yeah, we're in the bottom of the Jordan Rift Valley that runs all the way from the north to the south. Uh, the Dead Sea is literally two miles behind us. Imagine Jesus being here with John the Baptist, quarter mile wide Jordan River, throngs of people waiting to be baptized, and he goes from that scene into this barren, desolate, dry, hot, dusty space. And we're about to see that transition. That's where we're yeah. going next. Barry, what are we doing up here? <laughs> well, I wanted you to experience the wilderness. We read in Mark 1, immediately after the baptism of Jesus, it says the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness 40 days, being tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. Now, we're in the wilderness of Judea. This is exactly the type of place where Jesus would have been when this event happened. And of course, uh, today, the day we went, is tremendously hot. I think it was probably near 100 degrees. Even right now, I can feel the heat radiating through the soles of my shoes, burning and scalding them. I just hide it really well. <laughs> being out here and seeing this, I can really imagine Jesus being in this space for 40 days, the sun beating down on him, no food, no water, and during that period of time, Satan is tempting him, trying to get him to take shortcuts, trying to give him ways out of fulfilling his purpose for coming to earth. One of the things he tempts him with is, you've been without food for so long. Turn some of these stones into bread. Right, and as you can see, there are plenty of stones around here to do that. There are, and for Jesus to be offered that shortcut, you know, you don't have to get back to civilization. You don't have to get back to people. You can satisfy your hunger right here. The Bible describes Satan as cunning and he uses opportune moments to tempt us. And he obviously did that in this instance. Jesus was hot, he was thirsty, he was hungry, he was alone, and for 40 days, Jesus is being tempted by Satan. And so it was just, it was wise on Satan's part, it was crafty on Satan's part, but Jesus didn't give in. Well, not only was Jesus out there for 40 days, but he was out there also for 40 nights too. During the time Jesus lived, it would have been complete darkness with the exception of the moon and stars. And to be out there alone, I think, during that time, and to be considering all the things that not only the devil was tempting him with, but just the, the environment itself would have been very difficult to handle. I know growing up, I had a misconception of what the word wilderness means. I always thought it was dry and arid like it is here, but I always thought it was flat, sandy, yeah. like kind of like a desert back in the United States, but it's really not. It's mountainous. It's actually really beautiful, but it's completely different than what you normally have in your mind. Well, and it mentions there were animals. I mean, we've seen some of those since being here. Being in this space helps us visualize that, absolutely. I really appreciate you taking me. Glad to. I think one of the things that biblical students need to connect, a couple of dots they need to connect when they think about the temptation of Jesus, is that Jesus came to fulfill all righteousness. And so just like Jesus was 40 days in the wilderness, the children of Israel had been 40 years in the wilderness and had consistently fallen short of God's standards and expectations and desires. And so Jesus comes and as he 
perfects all righteousness. He goes through this 40 day, this, this shortened version of being in the wilderness, and he does it perfectly. He never once gives in, he never once fails God, and it is one of the events that helps demonstrate that he's able to be our sinless sacrifice. We've come from the Judean wilderness where Jesus went out. He was led by the devil to be tempted in the wilderness. And during that temptation, one of the places that he takes him is here to the Temple Mount. Now specifically, Matthew records that the devil took him to the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus replied, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. In my mind's eye, when I hear he took him to the pinnacle of the temple, I think like the peak of a western roof. But what you've been explaining is that's not exactly what we should be picturing. What should we be picturing? We use the word pinnacle as meaning top. Right. That's not necessarily the way it's used here. Most likely, the pinnacle of the temple was referring to the southeast corner of the Temple Mount. There's a place here that would allow the devil to take Jesus. He would have been able to look down over the Kidron Valley and tempt him to throw himself off there. The fall there would have been several hundred feet. The Kidron Valley actually has filled in a good bit over the centuries, and so it would have been much deeper at that time. Well, and one of the things to think about when he's taking him to that part of the temple and asking him to throw himself off, he's tempting him, and it's a unique type of temptation. What he's offering Jesus is this very public, dramatic display that if he were to throw himself off the pinnacle of the temple down into the Kidron Valley and God were to catch him up, that everyone would have recognized him for who he was. He's, he's trying to offer him a shortcut, a shortcut from the cross, a shortcut from the betrayal, from the beatings. Instead, he's trying to offer him a glorious way, a dramatic way, a, a safe way to prove who he is. That's exactly right. He decides not to test God, that he's not going to give in to that temptation to appeal to his pride. One of the things that I've noticed standing here is in front of us, we're looking at the pinnacle of the Temple Mount. We've got the Ophel in front of us. And then behind us, we've got traffic whizzing by and tour buses and cars and mopeds. Yes. These people are driving past all of this every single day. Every single day. And I often joke that David and Solomon, when they originally designed the city, didn't account for all the traffic that would be coming through here 3,000 years later. It would have been nice if they had done that. There's a lot of traffic that comes through these wonderful places uh, that are so rich in history. In this episode of Following the Messiah, we've focused on the baptism and the temptation of Jesus in the Judean wilderness. Now, over in Hebrews, the Hebrew writer explains that Jesus is able to sympathize with us in our weakness because while in the flesh, he was tempted just like us, yet without sin. Jesus had to be sinless in order to become our sacrificial lamb. So when we see him go through these moments where he completes all forms of righteousness by being baptized by John, or when he goes into the wilderness to be tempted for 40 days and never succumbs to the temptations of Satan, we see him successfully become the sacrificial lamb that every single one of us so desperately needs. Mm -hmm.